Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video episode of the Forgotten Weapons Library. We're looking at a book today that I did a, a brief touch on, actually probably a couple years ago when it first came out. Uh, but there was a very limited edition originally available, they sold out quickly, I never bothered doing a, a formal review because, frankly, the book sold out and was unavailable. However, it has come back into print, there's a second printing, so I think we should take a closer look at it now. And the book is Chinese Small Arms of the Second Sino-Japanese War by Bin Shi. So I should start by saying that the Second Sino-Japanese War is kind of the, the Chinese way of describing World War II. For them, it was primarily a conflict against Japan, and it lasted either from 1931 or 1937, depending on which historical events you want to take into account, until 1945. Now, the Chinese used a just huge menagerie of different equipment and weapons during this conflict. Um, a lot of us have seen things like, you know, funny Chinese-made copies of various types of guns, Mausers or uh, Colt 1903s or... Um, uh, Mauser broom handle pistols. There's really not much written about this stuff, about what was imported into China, purchased and used by their military, versus what was produced domestically, um, trying to get a handle on the different Chinese arsenals that were producing guns, um, the difference between the arsenals and the little small, you know, couple of guys with a forge kind of home shop. Um, very confusing, very difficult, especially, you know, it's only compounded by the fact that I, and I expect a lot of you guys, don't actually read Chinese, so you can't, you know, something that even we could normally get a good clue from on Western guns by reading the markings is very difficult to do on Chinese arms. Well, uh, Bin Shi is bilingual and has quite a selection, quite a personal collection of Chinese small arms and has written what is so far, as far as I know, the best book out there on Chinese arms from World War II. One last thing to point out before we take a look inside is that this is actually available in two versions. We have the English version and we have the Chinese version. Uh, now if you read Chinese, the Chinese version is the obvious choice, it's the better of the two. The hitch is if you want the English text version, it is printed all in black and white because it's printed in a different, by a different press. I don't know exactly why, but it is. Um, so it's all black and white. The photographs are generally a little bit smaller. They're obviously not being color, they're not quite as useful. So if you want the best quality pictures, you need to get the Chinese version, which means if you don't read Chinese, ideally you want both copies. So we'll take a look at that um, in a little more detail as we go through the inside of the book so that you can see what's in here. All right, we're gonna take a look primarily at the English version here, but then we'll, I'll compare some of the pictures to the Chinese version. So it starts out with an introductory section on the, the background of the Sino-Japanese War, the, the, Chinese, the Japanese invasion of China, um, and then moves into the Chinese ordnance industry, because before you can even get into figuring out what the guns are, you really need to have some background on how the Chinese arsenal system was set up. So this goes through a variety of different types of arsenals, touches on all the major ones, does include, for example, the major arsenal markings, which you will see on firearms. Once we get through this section, we move into a series of chapters divided up by type of firearm. So pistols are first. And this does cover both uh, purchased and imported pistols, as well as domestic made copies and domestically made uh, new designs. So obviously one of the common guns in, in China at the time was the Mauser C96, commonly known there as the box cannon for its shape. Here's an example of some indigenous pistols. They're mechanically copied on Brownings, but uh, look fairly different. Another example of some of that, some of the, the really unique stuff that comes out of China that's very hard to find information on. Uh, after pistols, we have rifles. There were a number of copies of Mauser actions um, that were made in China. They're often identified by the arsenal that made them. Um, Again, this is a subject that's very difficult to get good information about in English, and uh, Bin Shi has put together a very nice resource here for us. Um, this is an example of one of the pictures that is really much better in the Chinese version than in the English version. Um, as you can see, a lot of this stuff, yeah, it's a little darker, it's black and white, but it's still usable. We'll take a look at some of these, what they look like in the Chinese version when we get through this one. 
Another example here, we have some compare, uh, comparisons between different features on different types of Chinese rifle. Um, those pictures are better and larger in the Chinese version. Uh, again, uh, we have not just native Chinese produced guns, but also guns that were imported. Let's see what we have next. Uh, next is section on light machine guns. Uh, for example, did you know the Chinese actually produced a copy of the Shosho for a short time? One you don't see very much. Uh, another one of the main ones that we do have some information about because it came from Canada are the Inglis uh, production Bren guns that were shipped to China on contract. Bunch of cool guns here. Um, after light machine guns is a section on heavy machine guns. The most common being a copy of the 1927 Browning. Um, they also had a lot of Maxim guns, which are covered here. This is another example of some of the pictures that are better in the Chinese version. Let's see, we have submachine guns, including copies made of the Thompson. Uh, and after that is a section on, or a couple sections on, other types of weapons. So we have grenade launchers, we have bayonets, bladed weapons, grenades themselves. Uh, there is a chapter on Japanese arms. This is quite a bit shorter. Um, there are lots of good resources out there on Japanese arms. This is only here kind of as a, an easily accessible reference. Of course, the, the Chinese comp, uh, military captured a good number of Japanese weapons over the course of the fighting. Um, the appendices, there are several. There's a bibliography first off, um, a chart of translations of military and ordnance terms, certainly something that could come in handy. Um, there's also, what's pretty cool, a list, a translated list of the guns that were on the official ordnance books in China in 1933, which cover a ton of different makes and models. Um, and lastly, on the appendices, um, a translation of Chinese ammunition container markings, which is particularly uh, likely to be of practical use to anyone who's collecting Chinese material. Now, taking a look at the Chinese version, here is an example of some of the broom handle Mauser pictures. You can see they're in color, they're bigger, they're nicer. Uh, the Chinese version is all glossy print. Here's that example of the receiver markings on a number of Mauser varieties. So it's bigger, it's crisper, it's clearer. Whether that's enough for you to spend the extra uh, extra money is, uh, well, that's up to you. There's another picture of some ZB26 receiver markings. And lastly, a look at the, the Maxim mechanical function. So as you can see, this is definitely currently the, the go-to resource on Chinese firearms of the era. Um, there is obviously the question of, do you want the English with the black and white or the Chinese or both? Um, if you're just looking for the information, I think for probably 90% of people, the English language version alone will suffice. It still has the pictures. They may not be quite as good, but they are still usable. Um, and you can get the, the English version alone is 40 bucks. Um, that's from ChineseFirearms.com. The Chinese version is cheaper. It's 30 bucks if you would like that, um, probably because it was cheaper to print. It's a little smaller. Um, and the two combined are 60. So if you want both, they knock 10 bucks off the price, um, which helps. 60 bucks is a lot of money to get the two books. I really kind of wish they'd been able to print the English version in color, but they didn't, and that it is what it is. So, um, like I said, it's available at ChineseFirearms.com. The first printing of, of both copies sold out pretty darn quickly. So if this is a subject that you're interested in, I would say don't hesitate too long. I have no idea how many copies of this second printing came out, but eventually they too will disappear and then you'll have a hard time ever finding another copy. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for tuning into Forgotten Weapons and good luck with your Chinese small arms collection.